pretty toasty today. Let's go see what the gas prices is at today. Hopefully, under four dollars. Gonna cross, cross my fingers. A couple of days ago, it was up at uh, three ninety nine. So I hope it's not gonna go over four dollars. But I'm pretty sure it will. I think this is actually just the beginning of. Uh, some massive increases in gas prices and in everything else, as I'm sure you already know. We got $3.99 today as well. Yeah, we got $3.99 regular, and then I think $93 was like $4.30 or something like that. Do I miss my Tesla? Well, I would say maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit. I know a seat belt is coming. A quick update today. That's what this video is about. It's been a while and I want to talk to you about the move to Colorado. So it's not gonna happen in April as I was really, really hoping it was going to happen. But unfortunately what happened was uh, we still have a lease here in Florida. And I was under the impression it was gonna be uh, a certain amount to break that lease and get out uh, in, at the end of April. But the problem was, it's gonna cost us five grand to break the lease. And honestly, I don't wanna flush five grand down the toilet. So I guess the bottom line is that we're, uh, we're staying one more summer here in Florida and I'm gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna go uh, do whatever Florida has to offer and try to find some campgrounds and spots. I know the problem with the Florida camp spots that I've seen so far is that um, they're they're all too comfortable for me like what I'm looking for is go straight out into the wilderness put up my rooftop tent and just relax and uh, enjoy nature but it's very hard to find those places here in Florida and that's why I was so excited to go to Colorado because then I would have all summer to do stuff like that uh, over there until uh, winter comes I think I'm probably gonna do it in winter time as well I just like to be a little bit more uncomfortable than what I am right now. It's too comfortable. It, being too comfortable makes me feel uncomfortable, if that makes sense. I don't know. Sounds totally nuts, but uh, that's just how I am. I need to go out every now and then to kind of, I think, appreciate everything else that you have, all the comforts that you have on a daily basis that we take for granted. It's good to just go out sometimes and... Uh, experience the wild I guess you could say. In other news, what's new for me? Well, I gotta do some grown-up stuff. Uh, apparently my wife said that my insurance card has not come and we, we, we obviously pay for the insurance so I need to figure that out and then I need to file my taxes and do all those fun, exciting stuff that you need to do as a grown-up uh, which uh, I think everybody thinks is really fun to deal with. Another thing with Florida these days is right now it's season here. I feel like it's season every single day and every single month of the year but right now you have out-of-state cars everywhere and uh, I don't think Florida is actually the infrastructure of Florida is it, they can't really take much more traffic than this so it doesn't matter what time you get out on the roads. It can be uh, in midday, it can be lunchtime, it can be l late at night. It's always gonna look like this these days. And that's just ruins the fun of just going for a drive, for example. And another reason why I wanna move to Colorado, I think the last time I was there in September, it felt like it was a lot more open space and a lot less uh, people-y everywhere we went and that's kind of what I'm looking for as well so with these gas prices as well you might ask yourself I'm asking myself to be honest like do I miss the Tesla because as you know the Tesla I had free charging 40,000 miles and I sold or traded it in for, for, for this uh, Ram 1500 with the uh, with the plans that we were gonna go to Colorado in April and now we're going in I think end of September or October or something like that so do I miss uh, 
the, the Tesla for daily driving. And honestly, if I'm completely honest with you, yes, I do miss the Tesla for these daily drives when I'm not using the truck for what I built it to be used for, if that makes sense. And I think the Tesla was just the optimal daily driver, specifically in traffic like this, when you have stop and go, you get a lot more range that way because you're regenerating the energy from the braking all the time. So this traffic is perfect for a Tesla. Colorado plans is still in, in the works, obviously. We are going at the end of our lease. But that means that I'm gonna drive around in this Ram 1500 for almost a year before I'm actually gonna do what I built it to do. And that is of course going uh, overlanding on, uh, on some cool mountain hills and lakes and stuff like that. So we're gonna see how that pans out. I honestly cannot wait to uh, move to Colorado. Florida is a beautiful state, I've said this before got the beaches and all of that, uh, the beautiful weather. But as I said, the traffic right now is getting ridiculous. And me, I work from home. So I sit in front of the computer all day and I get anxious if I don't reconnect with nature every now and then. And that's what I think that's the biggest thing what I'm looking forward to, just getting out of this state and exploring a new one. It's just to reconnect, just take a day or two to just pack up the truck and just go and do whatever you want for a couple of days. No social media, no TV, no news or nothing like that. Just reconnect with yourself and reconnect with nature. I've been missing that ever since I moved to Florida because it's really hard, as I said, to find those wild, really wild places down here. Hopefully that's one thing that's gonna change when we move to Colorado. With the gas prices right now, as I said, I think it's gonna be go up to even more than what we have right now. And I'm looking at a mobile up here and it looks like, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 429. The other thing I wanna to talk to you about is something really cool actually, something exciting. And that is that uh, Ram has recently announced that they're gonna make, we, we knew that they were gonna make a Ram 1500 EV, but we haven't really seen any designs of it. And they've just released a couple of uh, tease sketches, pictures from it, very, very tease-like. You don't see a lot, you don't, you see a little bit of the front headlights, which is still a sketch. So it's, it's not sure that's exactly what they're uh, gonna design it as, but it looks pretty cool. From, uh, from what you can see. And the thing about that is, it's late to the game. It's pretty late to the game if you consider the Ford F-150 Lightning is, I don't know if it's on sale yet, but it will be very, very soon. Same thing with the Silverado EV. Claims that Ram put out for the Ram 1500 EV is very, very bold. They said that it will essentially destroy every other EV truck that's on the market right now with the specs that the Ram 1500 is gonna have. Not so much, they didn't mention any any performance bits, for example, horsepower zero to 60, but what really matters, in my opinion, when it comes to a truck EV, is the charging time, the towing, the payload, and the range. And those are the four categories that Ram themselves say that they they have totally under control and everybody's gonna be blown away when they finally release the, the Ram 1500 and, and the model and all the specs. So that's gonna be really interesting to see. I think it's supposed to go on sale in 2024 or something like that. And I really look forward to specifically seeing the design from the teaser pictures. It looks like it's leaning more towards actually a uh, Silverado EV with the almost um, avalanche-like truck bed. I saw an avalanche right next to me. It's gone now, so I can't show you, but I wish it would just pop up next to me now but uh, with, with more of a sloping uh, C-pillar. And I think that's gonna look good on a truck. The problem with that is some, some people think, and it, it, there's a legit concern as well, that if you have a sloping line like that, it's gonna interfere with the usability of the bed because it interferes with the space of the bed and probably the functionality, the loading capacity. And so what type of uh, products you can load or stuff you can put out, up on the bed. And that is a legit concern. But from a design standpoint, I think it looks a lot better that way. But that's just my opinion. I'm gonna have to wait and, and see until they reveal the whole uh, the whole picture. I guess the biggest issue with EVs these days is probably the range and the charging time. Yes, it's an issue, but if you have time to wait, you can just wait until it fills up. But imagine if you waited 18 minutes and then you have like 500 miles of range. And that's, I think, the problem, at least in my head, when I think about uh, trucks specifically, you're gonna load them with 
so much stuff in the bed and they also towing. The TFL truck did a test with the Tesla Model X a long time ago when it first came out and they started towing and the range just dropped by, I can't remember what percentage it dropped with, but it was like 70% or something like that. So I think that's the biggest challenge for specifically truck manufacturers to create an EV and have it be actually usable as a truck, have more range than like 50 miles. Think about this, if you wanna use it as an overland vehicle, you gotta need some more range than any of the offers, I would say that any truck has to offer, EV truck has to offer today. And that's about it for today's little quick update here. And as always, if you have any locations here in South Florida where you think would be cool for me to go and film and maybe do an overnight stay at, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.